It's back with another video, and as you guys can see, I'm coming at y'all with yet another live reptile, or in this case, amphibian unboxing. In this box, we have two uh, slimy salamanders, plethodon glutinosis, and uh, yeah, we're gonna crack this box open and see how we're doing. I'm really anxious to see how they're doing because I know uh, amphibians can be a little bit more sensitive uh, than reptiles can, just being amphibians and having permeable skin and whatnot. Uh, I'm gonna go into that more as I get these guys out, but yeah, let's hurry up and get this box open. As you guys can see, I got them from uh, Underground Reptiles, very uh, reputable exotic pet shop based out of Florida. Uh, they have an online shop as well. You can get anything from you know, uh, tarantulas and lizards to even mammals like uh, foxes and capybaras. So, yep, they uh, got a whole bunch of stuff you can order from. But I, I just got these salamanders for the anole tank. And uh, yeah, man, let's, let's get into it. Let's open them. Open. So you got your styrofoam here for insulation, keeping it uh, cold or warm, depending on the animal. And this is uh, either the cold or warm pack. This is a warm pack, I believe. It's not that warm, but uh, it's all right. These guys should be all right because uh, in their native range, they experience winters and stuff, so. Wow. And there they are, wow. So I was wondering, uh, on the side it said they go ship them anywhere from four to six inches. These guys are pretty big. These are perfect. You know, sometimes they'll have, and these are uh, also fuel collected uh, it, it tells you on the Underground Reptiles website. So, you know, you can have individuals with missing toes and stuff. But let me open them up so I can get a better look at them. So, here they are. They look to be uh, about adults. I don't, they said they get around uh, you know, six inches or so. And I'm sure that's including the tail. So, these guys are pretty big. These are a uh, plethodontid species of salamander. Scientific name is plethodon glutinosis. And the uh, plethodontid salamanders uh, don't have lungs, so they actually breathe uh, and respirate through their skin. So they need, you know, they need to be in a moist environment where uh, you know, their skin can exfoliate properly, which is, is under logs and, you know, in moss and stuff. So. Yeah, let's get a better look at these guys. This one is way bigger than the other one, but you can see that uh, spotting, wow. That flecking is uh, a signature of this species. Kind of looks like stars or something. I got a name, but something, something space theme, you know, something like a constellation or something because it looks like, a, like stars in the night sky or something like that. Super interesting looking salamander. And then uh, this one has some, some real milky coloring on its sides. It gets real milky over there. And they're called slimy salamanders because um, <clears throat> in the wild, say you find one of these guys under a log and pick it up, they'll uh, roll around um, and they, they'll secrete this super sticky glue, almost like substance from the base of their tail. And it's super sticky, so sticky that it, say if a raccoon or something were to eat one of these, it could uh, potentially glue the raccoon's mouth shut and cause real issues. But super cool amphibian. Yeah, let's take a look at this smaller individual. I'm not sure uh, if these guys are male or female, but a males will have kind of like a sensory organ uh, at the bottom of their chin that basically helps them. Uh, uh, chemically detect other members of their species and help with scenting and all that. But as you guys can see, they arrived in perfect condition. I find it funny how salamanders kind of look like a, like a rubber toy or something. 
if you didn't know any better. And here is the other individual. It is huge. Gosh. Way bigger than the other one. This one's definitely, uh, if not an adult, close to it. Basically like a frog in a lizard's body, <laughs> in a way. But yeah, as you guys can see, they arrived in perfect condition, full of tails and everything. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and add them in a tank and I guess show you guys them in their new home. I'm going to be placing them basically uh, over in this area of the tank where I know there are some, some uh, you know, wood on the ground, some kind of basically logs that, uh, you know, they'll go in. Naturally, they'll be under stuff like this, roots or whatnot, in the soil, making their own burrow. So I'll put them in this area of the tank. Um, they say uh, these guys are territorial, so it is, it's going to be real interesting to see where these guys settle down and how they uh, bring a new dynamic to the tank, but here's what I mean when I have the infestation of of isopods. They're they're eating new growth on plants and stuff. It's just it's just getting out of control. They need another predator, and hopefully these guys will be just that. One hour later.